Welcome to The Joy of Music. Featuring as hostess, Diane Bish, the first lady of the organ. Praise ye the Lord. Praise him in his sanctuary. Praise him with stringed instruments and organs. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Diane Bish. Welcome to the Joy of Music. We have a very special program for you today. You're going to be hearing hymns and great sacred classics as played by a string orchestra with organ. And then my very special guest is James King, the famous Heldon tenor who has sung in the great opera houses of the world. We would like to begin the program by playing a very wonderful hymn that speaks of our faith in a loving God, Jesus thou joy of loving hearts. It's a very great pleasure for me to have on the Joy of Music today, James King, one of the great Heldon tenors of the world, who has sung at all of the great opera houses and is a success wherever he goes. I know him to be a man of great talent and also of great faith in God. We're going to hear him sing now before we talk to him about his life and his faith and his music. He's going to sing Psalm 91. The words are so meaningful. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty.
My very special guest today on The Joy of Music is James King, and it's a real honor to have him on the program. Welcome to The Joy of Music, James. Thank you, Diane. You're known around the world as a Heldon tenor. Can you explain exactly what that is? <laughs> well, Heldon really only means heroic, and uh, the Heldon tenor is the type of tenor with a very large voice, very strong voice, a very powerful voice in all three areas of the voice, the high, the middle, and the low. And uh, I always say, you can tell a Heldon tenor by the, by the way he comes down rather than goes up. He should be able to sing as high as any other tenor, mm -hmm. but he also has power in the lower octave, which most lyric tenors who have great high notes and great high voices don't have. How do you get to be a Heldon tenor? Is it something you're born with? You were born that way, but you have to develop and train, of course, as anyone else does, any other singer. It's probably as hard as anything to learn, though, to manipulate as there is in the field of singing. I, I'm sure the Heldon tenor has a terribly difficult time getting himself properly established in a, in a good sound vocal technique. Are it took there... me many years. I started very late. Uh -huh. I didn't sing my first Wagner role till I was 38 years old, and, and but it was, it was ideal. That's the kind of roles that you sing most of the time, are the Wagner roles? Wagner and Strauss, and uh, Strauss roles, and uh, Beethoven's Fidelio, of course, I sing a great mm -hmm. deal. I just sang that last week in Paris. 
Are there roles that especially call for a held in tenor? Yes, or? definitely. The roles, particularly of Wagner, uh -huh. and uh, and uh, the roles of Strauss, uh, lend themselves to the. There are two types of held in tenor. Really, there's the heavy held in tenor, and then there's the the youthful. They call the youthful held in tenor, and uh, probably that's more my field. I'm not quite as heavy as as a Lord Melchior was, or today's Hans Beyerer in Germany. I don't have quite that much power, uh, but. Uh, the main thing, however, is that one sings with what he has and tries to make his voice as beautiful as possible. Power is, is actually something that's nice to have, but it isn't uh, in this, uh, ab absolutely necessary. As Paul Schoeffler used to tell me, he said, Jimmy, the main thing is that you sing beautifully and the power, let the power uh, take care of itself. Now, you are really an American, and you're from Kansas, and of course, yes. that's, that's great. That's I'm right. from Kansas, you know. <laughs> that's, a, <laughs> that's something to be proud there. of. Yes. But you live in Europe. Why did you choose to do that? Well, I, I was teaching at the University of Kentucky between 1952 and 1961, and uh, I studied, studied with uh, Dallas Draper at LSU before, and then I met Marcel Sanger uh, in about 1957, and I started studying with him to make the change to tenor. I'd been singing as a baritone. The held in tenor can often sing baritone, and does, until he manages to... Uh, uh, to reach the high notes. To, to get those high notes uh -huh. secured and, and, and free. And I studied with Mr. Sanger, and he helped me to make the change. It took me four years to do it, though, and I was still teaching at the University of Kentucky. And it turned out that, that Europe uh, offered the best opportunity for me and the quickest. And I was fortunately there and auditioned for the Berlin Opera in 1961, and they took me immediately. Well, I know you to be a man of great personal faith, too, which I know is important. You sing all these opera roles, but you love to sing sacred classics and hymns. I know you've told me your favorite's Amazing Grace. Is there any reason that you like to sing these these pieces, like spirituals? Well, I, I've always loved uh, my work in the church, and I started as a child in the church. I was brought up in the church in Kansas, and uh, I sang my first solo in, a, in the Christian church in Dodge City, Kansas. You happen to and remember what that garden. was? In the garden? And I was so nervous <laughs> I could hardly get through it. I was about 14 at the time. Uh -huh. And the, the, the music teacher in our high, junior high school uh, asked me to do that. And uh, she was directing our church choir at the time. And uh, I, I'm very much indebted to my, to my roots. Yes, mm -hmm. all of us are, I think. Yeah, and I, and I look back and with a great deal of nostalgia, recalling what I had as a child. Mm -hmm. It was enormous. It was really something very fine. And your faith has meant a great deal to you over the years as, yeah, it's as the you only have thing worked. It helps me hold myself together sometimes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm thankful for the blessings that I've had. I know I've been blessed among all men. I've been most blessed, I think, sometimes. I know you've chosen to sing for us today on the program, My Lord, What a Morning, a spiritual. You love mm -hmm. spirituals. I really have a great love for spirituals. and. Uh, this, these an anonymous works which came to us from the uh, black culture. Even Dvorak, you know, when he came to America, he was quite overwhelmed by the power in this music. And he used some of it even in his own works. The, the New World Symphony is an example. I think the song Going Home, mm -hmm. Going home. comes from, is the second movement theme. Dvorak was very impressed with the, with the Negro spirituals. And I too, and I especially love these arrangements of H.T. Burley, which I've used a number of times, and I use them even in Europe. People like to hear them there, even though they're in English. Why don't we listen now to James King sing, My Lord, What a Morning.
yesterday you were saying, James, about how you know that God gave you your gift of music. And of course, I believe that he's given me any gift of music that I have also. But have you found that, that you, you really sing for him, even though you're singing opera, that your, your faith really has made a difference? I have been deeply involved in Wagnerian opera because I found that there, that Wagner never wrote anything without taking some great human theme and making something out of it. And to me, this is kind of like a relig religion too. I, when I sing uh, a Lohengrin uh, and come as a knight of the Holy Grail, I feel, I feel uh, tremendously, deeply involved in this. And I was always so. I don't know when I wasn't involved in the church, and, and uh, it wasn't. Ha I said I, I had my religious experience. I was baptized when I was about nine, I think, and uh, but I've not stopped having religious experiences, and I've uh, uh, experienced a great deal in the theater and on the stage, and uh, that I I have felt this this mission still going on there as well as in my own private life. I try to be a one says we are saved by grace through faith, but like uh, Dr. Kennedy said yesterday in the service, that uh, when one has this quality, one then also tries to, to, to live uh, and work for, for the cause, and uh, not just to claim faith, because faith brings us immediately into action, I think, as love should. That's if right. we love really love someone, we want to show it. If we really uh, feel uh, uh, our religious faith, then we, we want to act upon it. We yeah. want to do what God has, has, has uh, commanded us or requested or asked us that we do. Well, James, thank you so much for just being willing to share your talent and your time. Because you are truly pleasure. the greatest. <laughs> and I hope you can come again no. sometime. That's Thank really you very fine. much. Thank you so much. It's a great pleasure to be Thank here. Thank you.
of the loveliest of all melodies that we hear sung by choirs across our country is Holy Art Thou by Handel. Today on The Joy of Music, you're going to be hearing it as played by string orchestra and organ. This is Holy Art Thou by Handel. Thank you so much for joining us today on The Joy of Music. My special guest has been James King, great Heldon tenor, and I know that you have enjoyed hearing him sing and hearing about his faith and his music. Thank you for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you again next week. <laughs>